Hello and welcome to Cashel here for this Tipperary Senior Football Championship quarter final. Slotmore Castellini against Kilsheel and Kilcash. We're expecting a big one today. Both sides are coming into this fairly confident, I suppose. Kilsheel and top their group. They did so well in that they were able to rest a few players for that last game against Ballyporeen and a lot more. Of course, are on a massive high after doing so well in the hurling last week with John McGraw out there. I'm sure we're going to mention him a good few times today. Getting 4-6 in that game, 4-5 in the first half in the hurling. So we'll be hoping to bring that in today's football game. We're joined here in the commentary box today by former Tipperary footballer Samantha Lambert. Samantha, what are you expecting from today's game? Yeah, I think today's game is going to be a real cracker. I think it's the, the game of the weekend, I think, and um, I'll be expecting to see the two sides kind of really battling it out and it'll be an interesting uh, encounter between the two. Um, so it'll be exciting to, to watch. Absolutely, and just before we get into the game there, there's been a few changes on both teams. We'll quickly run through the teams there, starting with Kilsheel and Kilcash. Um, so in goals for them, we have the county player there, the county goalie, Evan Comerford. The back line then is Jason Madigan, Owen Kyo, and number 20 there, Owen Kelly, comes in in place of number four, David Corcoran. David did, had a hand injury there. He got it, picked it up in a league game a few weeks ago. He's out. He's been a long-term injury, so that's no big surprise. Number five then, Martin Gibbs, six Bill Maher, centre of the defence. He had a big day in the Maher family yesterday. His sister got married. Number seven there, Mark Stokes, and in midfield... We have Cahill Kelly, and one other change there is Dara Brennan. Again, no real surprise to see him coming in there. He's 27 on his back, the team captain, and again, the man with plenty of county experience. Moving into the forwards then, number 10, Mark Keogh, 11, Paul Maher, and number 12, Sean Martin. And making up the final layer of their 15 there, we have number 13, Jamie Roach, 14, Barry Keogh, and 15, Billy O'Connor. Moving on to the lot more cast line eating then a few changes on that one as well. A couple that are very noteworthy. We'll get to that in a second. So starting in goals today, they have Shane Hennessy. Full back line then is Larkin Egan, Willie Eviston, the team captain, and Tomas McGrath. The half back line then there's one change in that. John Ryan, who was there at number five, is out, and in comes number 18, Aidan McGrath. Centre back is John Maher, and number seven is Tommy Maher. Their midfield, this is where there's another big change. A lot of people may be surprised at this. Number eight, Brian McGrath, is there. He was due to be playing alongside his brother Noel at number nine, but Noel is out, and he's replaced by number 17, Eamon Connolly. Moving into the forwards, then we have Liam Tracy, number 11, John McGrath, and number 12, Evan Sweeney. The full forward line, one change in this line as well. Number 13, Connor Ryan is starting there, 14, Liam McGrath. And in the corner, number 15, Connor McGrath is replaced by number 19, Kieran McGrath. So a couple of changes on both teams, a couple of high profile changes on both teams. I suppose Noel McGrath not starting is a bit noteworthy. Samantha, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I suppose um, seeing Noel McGrath there uh, will be a huge loss, especially midfield. Um, a key player and a player that I suppose would be pivotal to the Lockmore set up so um, he'll be a huge loss and uh, but I'm sure the, the players replacing him will, will try to fill that gap um, Kilsheel and then have a few changes but as I said we weren't too surprised with the changes that are going on there with Owen Kelly in for David Corcoran and um, Dara Brennan back in at the midfield for Billy Murphy, so he'll be a huge addition as well. As you, as you said already, it's not a big surprise to have him uh, featuring in the midfield position. Just looking at the pitch here now, it's, I suppose we're heading into the winter now, the last weekend of October. It's not looking fantastic. Well, how, what kind of an effect do you think that'll have on the game? Yeah, look, it'll probably be very slippery. We've had a few showers there just before the um, three o'clock there, so I think it'll be fairly slippy. The, the ground isn't very hard either, so um, that's what to, to be expected, I suppose, this time of the year. And look, it's, it's the same for both teams, and they just have to, to put up with it and, and see how they get on. They'll know within the first few minutes um, how, how to deal with it and um, just to keep the ball off the ground, I suppose, and get it to hand. And both teams, I suppose, are somewhat trend centres, you can say. A lot more the real trend centres with the whole dual club thing going for senior titles in both. Of course, they made finals last year in both of them, lost both of them by a point. I'll be hoping to go a bit further than that this year. And then we're going to pause here for the national anthem.
My apologies there. That wasn't actually the national anthem. That was a moment. Silence. But we're going to get going again here. It looks like both teams are in position. They're both getting ready to go. But as I was saying just before that, both teams are both still fighting on both fronts. A lot more in senior hurling and football, of course. They're already into the hurling semi-final, hoping to get into the senior football semi-final today. And Kilsheelan are into the intermediate hurling. And now we're off here today. They're playing Money Gall next week. We'll talk about that maybe more later on. But here we go. And it's a lot more on the attack straight away. But they've lost it. And now it's Kilsheelan who've turned it over. They've turned it over there through Martin. Martin feeds that one on in as far as Mark Kyo. Mark Kyo puts that across left foot across the field well taken there by lot more though they come away with that fairly easy enough nothing gone yet in this game now John McGrath a man who had a fantastic game in the hurling last week fist that forward as far as Tommy Maher and a lot more start to come driving down the field the far side of the field over and back now back to John again John looks confident he's driving forward he drops the ball as we mentioned the ball is currently going to be on the ground a lot today and when it does it'll just skid like mad a lot more hold on to possession here they've worked it over and back there McGrath Still in possession, still hold on, still being patient. But again, it's slip. It's going to be like a bar of soap out there. No one can hold on to it just yet. But it's a lot more look like they've done enough. But it's a Kilsheelan man eventually who's going to come away with this. They start to fist it out through the lines. And it's probably something we're going to see a lot of today. Martin now, number 12, and he's back. But he's back in the half-back position. Fist that away. Over and back now across the field. I was speaking to their manager during the week, their manager, Packy, and he was telling me how... I suppose patient we're going to see in Packy Larkin there. He said they're a patient style team. They expect a lot more to hit him probably on the break, but they're going to be ready for that. A lot more, I suppose, have been in. They're probably a lot more high profile maybe than Kilsheelan at this stage, but Kilsheelan will want to drive forward. They made the semi finals last year, lost by six points to commercials, and they're still on the play here, but the ball breaks down as well, taken up there by John Maher, the man with hurling experience as well with the county. Now it's John McGrath. John McGrath feeds it outside as far as Everston. The team captain slows things down, gives it outside as far as Sweeney. Sweeney takes a solo takes another one looking around him goes past his man feeds it on again over back again it's McGrath McGrath who's had plenty of possession in this game already only inside the first couple of minutes and he still has it he's patiently goes across as far as his brother Brian Brian is looking up here they're hoping to use that kick pass and they're trying to be very effective but it's well cut out there it's not cut out fully and it's Kilsheelan who are back in possession of the ball nice spun pass outside looking for Martin there Martin though He's dispossessed and it's a lot more who get on to this. A bit of hassle and harry and eventually they win themselves a free in. Yeah, a quick start to the game there. I suppose uh, Lockmore are attacking very, very fast and Kilsheelan seem to be putting up with it. They're after cutting out a good few attacks there, so they're defending quite well. Um, I think ball needs to go to hand today and um, they've lost a few possessions from sloppy passing. Um, but I'm, just, I'm sure the nerves will settle and, and they'll get those passing right eventually. So it's John McGrath now with this free. He's inside the 45. He's on this side of the field, the right-hand side of the field, the left-hand side of the field, I should say. He's a right-footer, so he's going to step up to this one. The distance shouldn't be an issue. Hard to tell here. The wind has more or less died down. Just to open his account and open the match account. And here we go. Is it currently inside the post? The umpires have a look at that. They go to the white flag. Good start and Lockmore are up and running. Yeah, great score there by uh, John McGrath. Um, put it over there on his, his right side, so... Um, they'll be happy to get that score on the board and settle them down smaller. Yeah, every score today is going to be vital. We probably aren't expecting a huge score in this one, but who knows, I suppose. Just the conditions aren't great for score. But one point to zero now in favour of Lockmore Castellini. And it's funny here, actually, at this the stand side, the flags here aren't blowing at all. It's supposed to stand to stop in the wind, but at the far side, we can see the flags are kind of being plucked up a gale, in fairness. And it looks like it's the Kilsheenan lads who have the advantage of that. They'll have the wind at their back, judging by them flags on the far side of the field. And now they start to come out of their own defence, start soloing, trying to hold on to the ball. Maybe they should be using that breeze a bit more, but they're still driving for all about possession at this stage. Well run into the tackle, wins himself a free, and Kilsheenan will have a chance to maybe regroup and try and organise from here. Yeah, very good. They're taking on the player every time and they draw the, the foul there that time. So, as you said, they've regrouped now and they'll set themselves up and try to get another score. And they're on the attack here through Bill Maher. Now, Bill looking around, looking for some support. Takes a solo, trying to gather himself, trying to get some support. Lays it outside. They hold on to possession here. Nothing opening up immediately. It's all the way back as far as Stokes now. Stokes goes back again and it's all the way back as far as Bill Maher now. Bill comes across here to this near side as far as Billy O'Connor. Billy O'Connor trying to inject a bit of life into this game and goes on as far as Martin. Martin, who's been fairly prominent so far also in this game. Leaves a lovely ball inside, and they've worked the ball inside the 14. Kill Sheelan still in possession of the ball, still trying to create something. There it is, Barry Kyo trying to take on his man over and back, but ended up having to go back to Jamie Roach. Jamie Roach then feeds that back out as far as Martin again. Again, they're just taking their time going over and back, over and back, holding on to possession now, and they've worked into a bit of space to Stokes. Stokes feeds that forward, and here they're going again. They're going past, trying to open up, trying to, trying to just make a gap for themselves, but a lot more closing everyone down, and that was a. 
a poor ball and Lockmore read that very well. Yeah, they've been kill shielding or spreading them out. I suppose they're trying to pull Lockmore out and they're keeping the ball out wide and spreading it across the pitch, kicking over and back. Um, but um, they need to be a small bit more patient. That ball into the centre there wasn't going to work with all the Lockmore defenders back there. So they'll have to just be patient on the ball and they'll work it in eventually. Brian McGrath taking that one, goes short enough there as far as Sweeney. Sweeney's coming forward, gives that now as far as Maher. Maher has a bit of space, goes through the centre, lays that ball back outside, back as far as Trassi. Trassi has it now, but he gives that there as far as Sweeney again. Sweeney's man falls over and creates a bit of space. Now here we go, a lot more. Have a chance here, they're 45 yards out. They have a bit of space. There's just a wall, a wall of blue and gold in front of him. Now it's back as far as McGrath again. That McGrath, of course, is Lee McGrath. You can't just say McGrath when Lockmore are playing because there's about 14 of them on the field. But either way, they hold on to the possession here. That was John McGrath back there. Give that back outside. And Lockmore hold on to this. They're being patient. Aidan McGrath now, who came on, started this game with 18 on his back. Wasn't due to start, but he's playing now today. Connor Ryan in feeds that one inside. Still Lockmore over on the far side of the field. Patient, patient. Just holding on to this one. Brian McGrath now. Brian McGrath. Minor winner back in 2016 with Tipperary Hurlers. Give that back as far as Lee McGrath. Lee McGrath, lovely outside the right boot, plays the ball inside, cuts open that defence, and Lockmore on the march here. Connor right now in a bit of time and space on his right foot, a well worked move, and a good score. They were patient. Lovely interplay and a nice score. Yeah, super score there. I suppose, look, they waited for the right pass to lose on, get, get, got the man on the ball um, to put it over the bar. So it was super worked and very, very. Very patient and I suppose Kilsheel have been working hard there, they're trying to press out but it's hard to stop the support play and, and a good ball going in. So two points to no score in favour of Lockmore Castellini and today's game is brought to you in association with Jim Strang and Sons, Kilsheel and main Peugeot dealers, Tipperary. And the ball is kicked straight there out of play and it's going to be John McGrath who's going to take this one. John has, oh he's actually given it over now, he's laid it back outside and now we've worked it as far as Liam Trassi who had a great game in the hurling again last week. We saw... Most of these players, on both teams in fact, are both playing hurling and football to a very high level. Now it's Tommy Maher, Tommy Maher of Lockmore driving over, he's over to 45, bit of pace here, out as far as John McGrath, John McGrath, they're around to 21 now, looking for a bit of space, shrugs off his man, still has it, still McGrath going forward, kicks that along the ground inside, it's dangerous in around the square, going across, oh it's into the back of the net, but the whistle was gone, as the keeper came out to that, Emma Comfort came out, seemed to get a bit of a kick, the ball did up in the net, but it was disallowed. Yeah, there is, seems to nearly be in for a goal there at that point, but um, lucky enough they got the, the free out and uh, Kilsheelan are back on the ball again and trying to attack and get a score on the board. So still two points to no score in favour of Lockmore Castellini, the men who made it all the way to the county final last year and were pipped by Clamel Commercials. And now it's Kilsheelan again, Mark Stokes. Stokes here, here we go, Mark Stokes again. The man with who was in with the tip footballers this year. He feeds that as far as Brennan, another footballer who was in the county player. Here he is, the team captain, puts that one high, goes through the centre of the defence. No mistake with that one, and Kilsheelan are on the board. Yeah, great score there, I suppose Dara took it on. Um, a few one-twos up through the field, ran at the heart of the defence, and they got a great score, well taken. And Dara now has, uh, can settle Kilsheelan into, into the game with a score on the board. And it was such a good score, it went out over the net to the back and it's just lost, it's gone. It's sort of kicked in two or three balls now to play this one on before we get going. Please God, whoever owns that ball has it marked and chipped and everything and they'll get it back and the club won't be at a huge financial loss. But we're ready to go again here now. It's going to be Shane Hennessy of Lockmore to kick this one out. He goes short, little side foot, out to the corner back. Out as far as Egan, I think it is. He has it now, trying to do something out there. He's trying to hold on to possession. Everson now, team captain, goes back as far as Hennessy again. Hennessy fists that one forward and who's all the way back here? All the way back here in his own defence, all the way back there, it looks like it's Connolly. Connolly fouled on his way out and it's going to be a free out, a free out to Lockmore Castellini back around their own 21. Across the field now, holding on to this one again. Lockmore possession stats must be through the roof at the moment, they've all had a touch in it, they've definitely had more possession. And what can Kilsheelan do maybe to try and break down this? Yeah, look, I think they just attack it. There we have their number 11 back street in there unfortunately not to get the the ball that time Lockmore back in possession but keep yeah, putting pressure on him almost like a rugby style intercept there as he ran through Paul Maher didn't manage to hold possession but it's Lockmore again who managed to turn this one over worked it down inside and a free comes in Oh, the Kilsheelan crowd don't like that either does whoever's inside there Dara Brennan who made that foul or was it Dara Brennan it, wasn't. it was Owen Kelly who made the foul but it's a fairly scoreable one around the 21 in front of the goals yeah look it seems to be a 50-50 kind of ball there but um, small nudge in the back maybe that the ref had seen so another I suppose easy, easy opportunity for uh, Lockmore to put another score on the board and here comes Conor Ryan now he has won from play already 
as I said, it's very central. The distance also shouldn't be a bother for him. He's taking it out of his hands, bouncing it several times on his right foot in front of the goals. Side of the foot between the posts. And he's second of the day and a lot more. Still just keep ticking away, ticking away from Kilsealan. And they'll, they'll take them scores all day if you keep giving them freeze in those positions. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I think Kilsealan needs to put a little bit more pressure on, on the... Lock more, they seem to be in a lot of possessions, so maybe holding on to possession, small bit, and uh, making use of it now for the next few minutes until the first quarter ends. Brilliant kick out there by Comerford, but it doesn't come into the one of his teammates' hands, and they drive forward here now. Lot more driving forward to Drama Gal, Drama Gal on the far side of the field, feeds it inside, gives it to the brother Brian, Brian with the shot in his right foot. Oh, it lost a bit of power, it was fairly handy, and Comerford caught it right into his hands. It was about head height for Comerford, which is about six foot four, I suppose, right into his hands. and the chance is gone and Kilsheelan now start to come away with this one again. They're soaking up the pressure. This was their plan. They were saying it during the week but they still need to score at the other end. They have whatever breeze is there so they need to be scoring more. They have one point on the board is already one point to three in favour of Lockmore Castellini in this one. And they've lost the ball there in the middle of the field. It's well turned over there. Back there. And Lockmore come on to this one again. It was well turned over there by Connolly. And now they're driving forward to Liam McGrath. Liam McGrath looking for some support. Gives it back outside to the man with 18. He's back. Aidan McGrath. Aidan McGrath taught about the hand pass then thought about it again goes past his man he's still driving forward gives it back as far as John John McGrath now again no panic on him oh gives the old Peter Lambert shuffle there goes past his man but loses the ball and it's turned over and Kilsheelan the, the shuffle worked but the ball just didn't stick this time of the year it's hard to get away with that kind of skill and the ball is slippy and he lost it and there was a chance there yeah absolutely I suppose both teams were unfortunate there the ball just slipped out of hand just conditions that we're dealing with today but um, back into lock more possession again and they're, they're on the attack once again yeah, it's going to be hard for Kilsheel. They just seem to be defending, defending, defending. And if they make any kind of mistake at all, Lockmore are going to get in. And Lockmore are over there. They're still working well down into the corner, down on the far side of the field. Three points to one in favour of Lockmore Castellini in this quarter final. And the shot's coming in from a dangerous enough angle out there. Has it got what it takes? It looks like it has. The umpire's like that. That's gone over the bar. Another good score from Lockmore. Yeah, super score there from um, out over the, out by the sideline there. Uh, well taken. Puts Lockmore in the driving, driving seat now with four points to one up. Um, they'll be looking at Kilsheelan to win this kick out now. Maybe he might go short. He hasn't won the last two long kick outs, so um, they need to get in possession again and get another attack going up the field. Yeah, good score there by the sideline. I'm not sure, was it Sweeney or was it Kieran McGrath? We, we might have to try and have a look back at that at some other point, but it's a score on the board either. Four points to one in favour of Lockmore Castellini. And it's now Kilsheelan back on the ball, back on the ball there. True, Martin Gibbs over on the far side of the field. He gives that as far as Stokes. Stokes looking for some support. He gets it through Billy O'Connor. Billy O'Connor on the 65. Fist that forward. Kilsheelan hold on to possession through Sean Martin. Martin then goes inside with the kick pass. Trying to lay it inside to Barry Kyo. Barry Kyo is out in front, but a fist comes in. Good defending back there by Willie Everston. It's going to be a line ball about 16 yards out from the Lockmore goal. They need to get a score out of this. They haven't scored for a while. Four points to one in this one. Kick goes short goal. Looking for Martin. Martin is fouled. And this should be a free, a fairly scoreable free. Four points to one. They'll be hoping to make it 4-2. Today's game brought to you in association with Jim Strang and Sons, Kilsheel and Main Peugeot dealers, Tipperary. But they'll be hoping to get something out of this. Yeah, definitely. As was an opportunity for them to get um, another point on the board and to put the, the difference between the teams just two points. So they'll be looking for this to be put over. Evan Comfort is after coming up from the goal line to take this off the ground, I assume. Um or possibly going out of his hands, so yeah, off the ground. So they'll be looking for him to put it over. Very experienced, so I have no doubt that he he'll put it between the posts. This is the first time we've seen him come up out of the goals. He got two against Mind Temple Tui, and he got two against Anna Carty. So he's well able to score. He's as we've seen at both club and county level. Coming at this with his left foot, he's got the white boots on. Comes up with his usual style. That looks to be curling nicely over. Oh, it's not though. Drops, drops short, and it was well read back there by Shane Hennessy. And now Comfort has to take the wrong, the long run back to goals. But the lot more lads are in no hurry to catch him out at the moment. They're playing it back along their own 14, 15 yard line. Playing it back there. Comfort has now made it back as far as the 21, just on Comfort watch. But he's safe, I think, as the ball has gone out of play. It's gone out for a line ball. A line ball now to kill Sheelan. Disappointed they didn't get a score there. Four points to one. They need to be taking every chance they can get if they want to advance in this competition. And now they have the ball again. They're advancing up the field through Stokes. Stokes goes past his man, but his man doesn't let him there. Pulled back there by Aidan McGrath, trying to stop the momentum. Kilsheelan are still trying to keep it going, still trying to drive it forward. The management team here of Kilsheelan are telling the Kilsheelan lads, relax, give it a few minutes. We have plenty of time. The crowd were starting to get a bit animated there and they don't like to see that. But either way, they've got themselves a free about 45 yards out from the attacking goal. They'll be hoping to get something out of this. Yeah, there's quite a few players there and it's hard to, hard to see them getting a goal at any point. So they'll have to take their, 
their chances at the points and kick them over the bar and keep it keep the scoreboard ticking over. Um, Lockmore seems to be piling them all back, so it's going to be hard to try to break that defence. But I think if they keep running at them, uh, they'll be doing very well. And both teams are so fit that shouldn't be an issue for either team. We might see it maybe collapse in the last 10 or 15 minutes of this game, but you wouldn't expect it from both these players. And now, look who, speaking of fitness, look who's back there. It's John McGrath back on the ball, played all 70 minutes the last day, or 60 minutes even, whatever it was, scored his 4 6. He's still flying here today. Again, he has won from a free. And it's all the way back there to Shane Hennessy now of Lockmore. He feeds that one forward as far as Evan Sweeney. Evan Sweeney of Lockmore over the 45. Still coming forward with the ball. Nice one down inside. They just soaked up all the pressure. And now they're hitting Kilshielen on the attack. On the counter-attack is what they're aiming for. It's what they've been doing all year. It's what they're trying to do here again today. And they've worked the ball now over the 45. But the ball has it. Is Aidan McGrath going to get onto that? He bends his back. He eventually does get it. And lays that back. A lot more hold on to this good defending back there. Though Bill Maher. Bill Maher was too aggressive according to the referee. And it's going to be a free in. Yeah, well, we're free. Look, the... the tackle was always coming he was going to play for the foul and uh, Lockmore back in possession and they're attacking with pace and speed and with determination so um, you can see them scoring if they if they keep up this rate and the uh, work rate for Lockmore is, is through the roof at the minute so um, can she learn a bit of pressure and trying to press out on them as much as they can Absolutely, and it's still a lot more over and back. John McGrath now feeds that outside. It's Tommy Maher. Tommy Maher feeds that as far as Sweeney. Now Sweeney decides to have a goal, draws a boot in it and shoots. Just had enough. Just about made it over the crossbar. And another score for a lot more. Yeah, another well-worked score there. Um, and they'll come into the water break. I think Kilsheelan will be delighted to see the water break coming so they can um, gather themselves and see where, where they can improve and put a stop to a lot more, putting pressure on them constantly. It's hard to kind of keep up the, the defensive work. Um, all the time they need to be able to to get create their own chances as well without having the, the pressure of wanting to defend all the time. So um be interested and see what way they'll they'll come out in the, the second quarter now. Yeah, so we're stopped here four points, five points to one even in favour of lot more against Kilsheelan. Just as we were stopped here for a second, Samantha, you were playing yourself yesterday in an intermediate game. You might tell us how that went for you. Yeah, we had a great win there against Kappa White. Um suppose we would have been going in it there as underdogs, they better than the Round the championship um, a few weeks back by a point, so we're delighted to get the win. We're looking forward to playing against Galtier Rovers there in the county final, intermediate county final there in two weeks. So that'll be a tough battle. They had a great win against Borland, so it'll be interesting to see what way things pan out. We came together, we met together there if, at the start of the championship too, and it was a draw game, so it'll be another close encounter. And it's a big weekend for ladies football in general in Tipperary. The semi-finals are on this weekend as well, aren't they? Yeah, Arlo and my lovers are currently playing there in Golden and do another great semi-final played tomorrow by um, Bruce and Keir. So they're both, they, they'll be both very, very tight encounters, but it, it brings some more excitement to the, the championship um, and to ladies football, not knowing who could win the championship. And I think it makes it all more exciting. Absolutely, and we're nearly ready to go here again. The water break has just finished. Both teams have had their say. Doesn't seem to be any changes just yet. Kilsheelan are actually still in their huddle, trying to get the last bits of advice through to the players. Five points to one here in favour of Lockmore Castelloni. Today's game brought to you in association with Jim Strang and Sons, Kilsheelan main Peugeot dealer, Tipperary. So we're about to get going here. Where is the ball going to start? It's going to be back down there with Emma, Emma, or Evan, I should say, Evan Comerford of Kilsheelan. He's looking around. You'd wonder would they have worked on something in the water break. We've seen that a few times in the hurling where they come out and have some kind of set player right off the kick out. Be interested to see how they got something here. Here come the Sheelan kill cash goalie. He goes short, very, very short. The ball is still back inside their own 14. He went short to Bill Maher and Bill gives it back as far as Owen Kyo. Kyo goes back as far as Comerford and they're holding on to the possession. They do need to get a few scores at this point. They have the breeze behind them. They do need to get the ball up the field a bit quicker than this, you would imagine. Mark Stokes now has it, but they're still inside their own, maybe just outside their own 21, but still a long way back the field. Now they're working. Now Stokes takes the ball on the break, on the shoulder, gives another good pass, and now they're getting to run. Now they're flying forward. Now Owen Kelly gives it on. Driving forward, gives it on to Kyo again. Here he goes, rub over to 45. The ball goes to ground, but they hold on to it. Still hold on to possession in as far as Barry Kyo. Kyo has it now on his right foot. He gives it back outside. Still holding on to a kill shielding inside the attack in 21. Working it back out. Holding on to possession. Nice one two there. Kelly gives it back as far as Kyo. And they've worked. Oh, but they just seem to not want to shoot. They had the ball inside the 21. Inside the 14 even. And now they've worked it out. The far side of the field. They're being patient. They're over there. Is someone going to have a shot? It doesn't look like it. They've been pushed out. Pushed out. Referee says fairly though. John McGrath looks like he definitely got a right push in there on his marker. But the ball has gone to ground. 
and they've turned it over and oh, Kilsheelan really probably should have done a bit better there with that attack. Yeah, the opportunity was there, I suppose, to take um, a, shot at, a shot at goal and um, over the bar even. Um, but they, they didn't, they spread it back out, switch ball and look, it just kind of killed the momentum, I think. And now it's a lot more who are looking to punish him. Here comes Liam Trassi. Here he goes. Absolutely flying into hurling last week. Lays the ball off on his left foot. Takes his shot. Good score. And that just shows the difference between the two teams. Yeah, definitely. Look, um, what could have been a score at the other end is a score for Lock Morgan. And they'd put another point on the board. Um, and that may kill, kill Sheila in a small bit. And disheartened him a small bit that they, they had the opportunity. It wasn't taken. And now there's a score at the other end of the field. Six points to one so in this Tipperary Senior Hurling Championship quarter final. And it's Evan Comerford taking that one. Goes to the far side of the field. Punched away though. And it's dropping there. In around the half-back position. The defending half-back position of Kilsheel and Kilcash. A lot more. The wind the line ball over there on the far side. And they're going to have a line ball maybe 35 yards out from the attacking goal. And potentially a chance to work something from this. We've got a runner there coming from deep. The runner coming from deep there is Tommy Marr. He's looking for it. He wasn't spotted though. And it's Aidan McGrath now of Lockmore who has it. He's over on the far side about 40 yards out from goal. Feeds that back outside and a lot more hold on to it again just being patient they're able to pick up the pace when they need to and attack but when they need to slow things down and just suck the life out of the team they're well able to do that as well Ryan there Ryan has two points already feeds that on practice John McGrath or that isn't John McGrath that's Connolly I should say Connolly then feeds that back outside and they're holding on to this one still a lot more still trying to do something oh the pass looked like it wasn't going to go to hand it looked like it was well read but they've turned it over Brian McGrath now has it Brian McGrath in the centre of the field about 40 yards out between the two sides on his right foot takes his shot but it drifts to the left oh it does not the crowd thought that was going wide but it had just enough to go between the posts and over yeah great score there um, excellent space was there he took the opportunity and kicked it a, a great kick over the bar um, another point for uh, Lockmore this season 7 points to 1 up now at this stage they're very much in control of the game and um, Kilgillian will be looking to win this kick out they may go short again but they need to attack with a bit of um, speed this time I think up the field yeah, Brian McGrath with that last score and as we said seven points to one Kilsheelan need to be getting a score here we're into the we're about 18 and a half minutes or so gone in this one we're well into this game and they've still only got one score on the board that score coming from uh, that score coming from Dara Brennan there where he ran through the centre defence and put it over a lot more on the other hand then have seven and now they have the ball again between the 265s is a free in and kicked in there they're looking inside looking inside for their big full forward they're looking for McGrath looks, but it drops looking for Kieran McGrath even drops to the ground though. it's still there still fighting and now it's a free out free out to Kilsheel a good defending back there and they'll be hoping to build on this and it looks like we might have a sub coming on here it looks like Kilsheel are about to make a sub there it's their number 25 it looks like he's coming in Emmett Butler we'll see who he replaces he's moving up into the for in a second actually that sub isn't going to happen for a minute Possibly not anyway. There's a bit of confusion on the sideline. The game is stopped, though, for people listening at home. You're not missing out on the game is stopped. The ball is in the hands of Bill Maher over there of Kilsheelan on his own 20 or attacking 20 or defending 21, we'll say. And has that change happened? Yes, it has. At number 25, Butler has come on. We had to see, I didn't actually see who came off. He's actually going off, off into the top corner, but Butler is coming into the forwards for Kilsheelan and he'll be hoping to make a contribution. And it's now Kilsheelan who do have the ball. They do have it through Stokes. Stokes in the middle space, feeds that one forward. And Kilsheelan are on the attack. They're up to you at 45. The shot's coming in. He would fall over as he hit that, but does it have what it takes? No, it doesn't. It's drifting off to the left and wide. The shot there from Kyo. And it goes to the left and wide, but I suppose slightly more encouraging, but at least they're getting the ball forward, but they just need to convert these chances. Yeah, definitely. Look, it was an opportunity there. He took the opportunity. He didn't go over this time around, but um, if they don't shoot, they won't score. So I think it was a great opportunity by Mark, and I'm sure he'll give it a go again. Um, he's well capable of it, so uh, why not take the opportunity when it arises? That's number 13 that's after coming off there for number 25, um, Butler. So that's the change that was made. So Jamie Roach looks like he has made away as is, as Samantha says and if you can see the, the tricolour there on your screen it, it's fairly blowing strong and it's hard to know who's helping at this stage it's kind of blowing across the field but yeah, I don't know which team is actually using it the most at the moment but if you look at the scoreboard you're supposed to have to say it's a lot more 7 points to 1 Kilsheen will be hoping to need a few more scores before, probably in 5 or 10 minutes 5 or 6 minutes I should say into the second quarter they need a score but they have come better in the last minute or two but just need to make a count on the scoreboard so we have a free now. Take Bill Maher. Bill Maher inside his own half. Goes back. Comerford has come all the way out to receive that. The ball is in play. Usually he comes out to take the free. And maybe that's what was supposed to happen there. Because he looked like he was slightly cut out. But either way, Kilsheel and hold on to this one. The ball is left inside. And they're quick onto that. The man who's come onto the field there, I think his butler has it now. 
he's looking around for someone. In fact, that wasn't Butler. In fact, that was uh, Dara Brennan. Dara Brennan, the man who scored a point for them already, gives an insight to Billy O'Connor. Billy O'Connor now feeds that outside. Still kills Sheelan. Still holding on to this one. Working the ball in as far as Barry Keogh. Barry Keogh, he's out by the sideline though. Going the wrong way with the ball, but holding on to it, which is the main thing. And they're still working there. It's Kelly. Kelly now has it. Kelly is turned over though. He's gone to ground. But they hold on to it somehow. It looked like they lost the ball. Kilsheelan hold on to it. Good bit of pressure by Kilsheelan. They didn't give up. They won themselves a freeze. Quickly taken there. Lovely ball into space. Over as far as Paul Maher. Paul Maher's inside the square. Maher with his shot. And Maher finds the net. Out of almost nothing. Kilsheelan have not been in this game for the last 16 or 17 minutes. One chance, one goal. Paul Maher, they're back in the game. Yeah, great score. Well taken by Paul Maher there. The opportunity came from the free. They seen the free player at the opposite side, switch ball on and uh, finished to the back of the net. It was a great finish um, and they soaked up that opportunity. 1-1 one, one now to seven points in favour of Lockmore Cast Line. But this game has come to life again. It looked like it was heading away for our, from Kilsheelan. But they're back in now. That goal by Paul Maher, well finished. They haven't had that many chances. So he knew he had to take it. Any chance they get, they have to take and score. And he did well there. 1-1 one, one to seven points, as I said. The ball left in there. And it's Lockmore on the attack again. Over in the far side of the field. Look, Kilsheelan have managed to turn it over. Good defending there. And it's Mark Keogh now of it. has it. He's over to 65. Still Keogh coming forward. Feeds that on again. Barry Keogh now is out in front of his man. Doesn't manage to get possession of it. First time and lot more have turned it over. And they work the ball across the field now. Still a lot more have it over there. Who has it? It's Connolly. Connolly now. Lot more been very patient back inside their own half back line, which is unusual to see. Barry McGrath there giving it across, and still lot more have this one. Kilsheel just need to break that ball down a little bit more, but when they come at pace, it's hard, and here comes lot more at pace. Tommy Maher, Tommy Maher's up to the 45. He's going forward. Three men come around him from Kilsheel and managed to absolutely out muscle him, and the crowd really liked that one. Three men converged on him almost Tyrone style, shut him down, and managed to turn the ball over. And now it's Butler. Butler for Kilsheel and feeds that one outside and kicked inside. Oh, just lost his footing there. The referee says he didn't lose his footing. The referee says he was pushed there by Eveston, and they've won themselves a free, and Kilsheel have really upped it in the last few minutes. Yeah, I think that goal is after lifting their spares there a small bit and they're really after getting back into the game. Um, the defensive there was was brilliant. They really met the player coming to the ball and three of them meeting one Lockmore player um, was excellent. They won the ball back and now they're in possession again with a free. Both sets of management here fairly animated about what's going on at the moment. They're having a right their battle is just as fierce off the line as it is between the two lines in fairness and they're both having a right go of each other but it's not something we like to see but you can easily understand why it's happening here this is knockout this is championship 1-1 one, one to 7 points and it's become a bit of a battle now and it's going to be a free a free in to Kilsheel and Kilcash Emma, Ev, I don't know why I'm struggling so much to say his name today Evan Comerford Ev, uh, there's been a yellow card down there at the far end of the field it looks like Lee McGrath has got himself a yellow card the referee has kept going Today, in fairness to me, got seven yellow Mark, cards. Uh, Jason Madigan, I think, from Kilsheelan got the yellow card. I'm not sure. I think it was. Um, as far as what I could see, he was talking to number two okay. from Kilsheelan, Jason Madigan, so he's got a yellow card there. Um, I didn't see what happened there. Did you, Samantha? It was off the ball stuff. Off the ball, yeah. I think he may have thrown a slap. And we restart here with a lovely free from Comerford. This time he gets a left foot like the shape of a C almost arc that over the bar and Kilsheelan are up to 1-2 one, 1-2 two. One, two to 7 points yeah great score by Evan there and look it brings him um, 2 points closer to Lockmore there's a bit of a tussle going on over the far side there between Lockmore and, and Kilsheelan lads um, so you can see that the game's getting a little bit hyped up and there's a good bit of tension there now that the, the game's beginning to get closer yeah only 2 points in it now and yeah neither team either on the management or the players want to take a step back in this one one two to seven points so yeah uh, they just need to sort themselves out now concentrating the football and get going again we don't have long left in the first half is the referee going over there he's talking to his linesman so there's probably going to be more cars handed out here looks like there's strong discussions going on there between the linesman and the referee maybe he's just going to say no let him off it was six to one half a dozen of the other still talking there and someone is going to get a call in it yeah, we're going to see not a huge amount happening at the moment as regards on the field play, but 1-2 to 7 points. Like this game, it looked over. 7 points to 1, it looked the game over. Now 1-2 to 7 points, anyone can win this. Yeah, definitely. Look, Kilsheelan are after getting back into it. As I said, the goals after lifting their, their spirits a small bit and after giving them a bit of a belief that they didn't think they had. So um, it's become very exciting and a um, lot more life to it. And the energy is after, after 
rising on, on both teams and I think um, Lockmore will be looking to get a score to settle themselves once again. I think we have a black card there for Aidan McGrath of Lockmore Castellini. He got the book in the air and he's going off the field again. It was for that chamozzle that took place a few minutes ago. So they're down to 14 for the next 10 minutes or so, which will surely take him to the end of this half and a little bit of the next half, you'd imagine. Um, so he's gone off the field there is Aidan McGrath so we're going to restart with a kick out now and this gives Kilsealan another chance and that one is skied into the air not won initially by either team now it's still on the ground still fighting for who has it it's a lot more man who has it and they're coming away again they're coming away there through Tracy Tracy goes to and every tackle every challenge every foul has been roared on here by the crowd here in Cashel today yeah, the crowd are really getting behind the teams there, especially Kilsheelan at the minute. Um, that was a, a, a fair physical uh, slap, I suppose, by Dara Brennan, number 27 and number 4, coming out of defence, and uh, Kilsheelan are putting great pressure on Lockmore coming out of, of their own defensive line now, so it's great to see no, no team likes to be under pressure coming out of their defence. And they're all the way back here is John McGrath taking the ball out of his own full back line. He's driving forward, he's up to the midfield, he's past the midfield. Took a massive shoulder there from Sean Martin. It looked shoulder to shoulder-ish anyway. The referee said it wasn't. There's a bit of descent and now the ball has been moved all the way in to a very scoreable free. Probably about 21 yards out. And from being in lot more deep inside their own defence, they've worked it all the way up and now have a fairly scoreable free. Yeah, there's a fair few slaps and then physical encounters going on um, with the last few minutes and it's after really open the standards and the level there of the game over the last um, a few minutes I suppose this quarter alone um, and then now there's an opportunity for Lockmore to get another point on the board Connor Ryan now with his going for he already has two going for his third on his right hand side puts that one over the bar fairly easy score and Lockmore will feel that has steadied them a little bit Kilsheelan had, it had been all Kilsheelan for the last couple of minutes yeah definitely um, they, they needed that score I suppose to, to get themselves going again and uh, this kick out will be important for Evan to for Kilsheelan to win I think we have a player down injured or getting attention there in the middle of the field at the minute. The referee is telling him to play on, though he's fine telling him to go on. I think it might have been Brian McGrath was down in the field, but he's up again now and Kilsheelan are coming again. They'll want to get a couple of more scores before half time and they're all the way back, slowly building up. They're back inside their own full back line. Back there was Madigan and he's going across the field they're holding on to this one dangerous enough pass but well retrieved there that was ball was into the air it was a hospital pass but he managed to get onto that hold the possession and he's won himself a free he was down there um, he won, did oh, well Kelly. he was brave on Kelly was got a tackle I say when he was in the air almost rugby style I think that's Kelly anyway got, when he was in the air he looks in a bit of pain but he's up and he's ready to go again and it's going to be Mark Stokes now to take the free again Comerford has come out for that one Comerford now is between the 265s the goalie hand passes that forward they're going again Mark Kyo. Mark Keogh gives that back. Now what are they doing? They're working it over and back through Stokes. Still Kilsheelan on the ball here. Back as far as Stokes now. Stokes, he's into the lot more half. Kilsheelan are going forward here. They need to get a score. They've worked it as far now as their corner back Madigan. He gives that inside again. And now it's Kyo. Gives it back outside to Stokes. Stokes is inside the 21. Stokes is still driving forward. Stokes goes down. Referee says he's fouled. It was soft enough, but they've got themselves a free. And they're going to be delighted with that. Yeah, they're running at the defence now. I think they're after getting a little bit of belief in themselves and they're taking it on a bit more, uh, driving at the Lockmore lads in the defence and Lockmore are crowding it out as well, so it is hard to break through and wait for that pass. But I think if they continue doing the support play that they're doing and giving the little one-twos, um, that they'll keep taking the the scoreboard over and Evan Comfort's up here again. I'm sure he'll he'll um, put this one over the bar too. Tricky mm -hmm. angle tricky angle is right he's not very far out he's only about maybe 12 or 13 yards out from the end line but he's maybe 10 or 15 in from the sideline he is left footed it's on the good side for him he's already scored one a few minutes ago he missed one shortly before that lovely technique on this one curls that one over almost soccer style over the edge of the wall you'd say and over the crossbar and Kilsheelan are up and going again yeah definitely and uh, look it's not, not too far from half time they'll want that score uh, two points between teams there again so um, they'll be looking to win this kick out and try to set up another attack there can't be long left in this half by my reckoning we've played about 15 and a half since the water break so we don't have a huge amount to go the ball is kicked out but it kicks straight out of play is it, is it kept in? no it's gone the linesman there spotted that gone out of play they won't be happy with that and a lot more defence that one didn't work out as they would have liked and Kilsheelan now have the ball again with a chance to attack Sean Martin is going to take the line ball about 45 yards out oh, there was an issue with the line ball though Oh, the linesman didn't like that. Uh, so, Mandy might explain the technicalities of that. I'm not sure myself there, but um, <laughs> Brian seems to have, have called it in there. It must have been maybe too far out or too far in off the field, but uh, just throw ball there now and um, a missed opportunity for Kilsheelan to keep possession. 
Absolutely, very unusual you see something like that. And yeah, he throws it in on his that half time, bit of an anti climax, no roar from the crowd, no nothing. Half time here, one three to kill Sheila and eight points. Or yeah, it is half time, isn't it? Yeah, the teams look like they're gonna stay there for another second, having a go off each other. No one wants to give Atten in this. They don't even want to walk off the field first at half time. That's how little they want to give in this game. One three to kill Sheila, eight points to lot more Castellini. Sum up the first thirty odd minutes of that one for us. Yeah, I suppose look like Lockmore got off to a great start. Um, they really put pressure on Kilsheelan. They're attacking the whole time. Kilsheelan seemed under a bit of pressure, trying to keep them out with all the attacks that were going forward. or a lot of support play, working a one-two, um, and Kilsheelan seemed to be kind of, I suppose, dead and out really. Um, the goal, I think, was a changing factor in it. Um, with Paul Mars' goal, well taken. They took the opportunity that was on. They seen the free player, and he he stuck it into the back of the net. Nate and I think um, they've drove on since then and um, they started getting a little bit of belief in themselves and I think the game itself actually took off since then like there's a lot of energy in the game you can see the work rate is upped and the physical battles that are going on there's a lot more slaps being thrown and um, boys are really getting getting into it now at this stage Absolutely, maybe more slaps than scores in this one <laughs> on some occasions. 1-3 to 8 points at the halftime score here in Cashel We'll take a quick break and we'll be back with full second half after these
in this game already. Two from play and one from a free. Still lock more. Now they've worked it back as far as Tommy Maher. Maher has one. Gives it as far as McGrath. Lovely little volleyball style pass forward. Here we go. The shot coming in from Maher. Maher with the shot. And that was a good score. You saw their class there. You could see why they made county final last year. They just have it when they turn it on. Yeah, very well worked for you. Our score there, I suppose. Look, um, one, two is simple and effective ball over the bar and they have another point on the board so nine scores I suppose to four scores for Kilsheelan. Um you can see that they, they've been owning a lot of the possession and Kilsheelan will be looking to get one back now shortly coming for kicks that when he goes long looking for Brennan Brennan got up for that got his hands and him couldn't control it and it's kicked out out of play and it's going to be a line ball a line ball to Kilsheelan, kicking away from the attacking goal it's Brennan now going to take this the county man looking around for some support here he goes. Has he got anyone inside for him? It doesn't look like he has. Actually, it's Bill Maher who has it, I should say. Bill goes back as far as Comerford. Comerford gets this one. And he's looking around. They're hoping to build on this. Hoping to get something going in this second half. They had a shot there a few minutes ago. They didn't convert. But now it's Kilsheelan. Here we go again. Driving it out. Over the 45. Over the 65. Still Kilsheelan. Hold on to this one. They look good at the moment. They look like they have their impetus up. The dander is up. Here comes Kyo now. Kyo lays it outside into a bit of space. Onto the man who came on a few minutes ago. Butler. He came on just towards the end of that half. Has a shot. Is it going to go? Barry Kyo keeps that one in very well. But he doesn't do enough. And it goes to the right and wide. Again, they're creating the chances, which is encouraging in one aspect, but they need, I suppose, to put them over at this point. Yeah, look, I suppose they look at the chances that they're, they haven't, they didn't really create in the first half. They're creating them now, and the scores might come after a while. Um, you have to take the opportunities when they're arising, just hope for the best that they'll go over the bar. Um, two excellent opportunities there, I suppose. And look, they weren't converted this time around, but at least they're back in possession. They're getting on the ball, and... Um, there's a substitution after we made there, I think. Yeah, it looks um, like Connor Neville has made his way onto the field for Kilsheel and Kilcash there. And he's nearly straight into the action over there on the far side of the field, trying to get into that one. But it's Lockmore who hold on to possession now, and they've worked it out as far as Maher. Maher, who got the point a few minutes ago, now driving for. He's got great pace about him. It goes past his man, but he double hopped there, I think. Something steps, the referee says. Not something we see too often at this level, but he's given the ball away now and Kilsheen are looking, looking to take this quickly and Mark Keogh is looking to take this one again we've seen a bit of descent a bit of indiscipline on both teams this one has moved forward again another 10 or 15 yards and now are we in Comerford range yeah he seems to be coming up from the goal line once again and um, seems to be within his range giving Kilsheen another opportunity I suppose um, something that came from over carrying to an opportunity for Kilsheen to put another score on the board and um, put them 1-4 up if he can kick this and convert it over the bar yeah, well, it feels like it's been a lot more. One, three to nine points in this one. Still only three in this. If he gets this, we're down to two. Now, this has... It's a fair distance out. He's kicking off a wet, mucky kind of ground, so it won't be easy. He goes about it with his lovely soccer style. Left foot. Has plenty of height. Does it have it? Just drops. Just short. And I think it might have been John McGrath again, who's all the way back there. Plucked that from just going over the crossbar. Well taken from McGrath. And a lot more now start to build. This is what they do. They hit you on the counter-attack. It's almost dangerous to attack them because that's when they come to life. They go forward there. But they're fouled. The ball is goes to ground. The impetus is stopped, and maybe Kilsheen will be happy with that because it just stops Lockmore getting going. And now it's John McGrath again. Yeah, John McGrath won it on the goal line. You can see him now. He's up into his own half and um, uh, back into the forward line, working hard and uh, serious pace coming out of the back line there. As you said, um, they're lethal in attack and they attack with pace and determination at the heart of the Kilsheen defence. So they'll be looking to get another score here and make it worthwhile. And here they go again now. Still a lot more possess the ball. They're passing it over back across the 45. Now they've won themselves a free on the far side of the field. About seven minutes gone here in this second half. One three to nine points today's game. Brought to you in association with Jim Strang and Sons Kilsheelan, main Peugeot dealers, Tipperary. And now it's going to be a lot more to take this free. Around 45 out. One three to nine points. And it looks like we might have a sub coming onto the field. The man, 15, Conor McGrath. It was due to start. He's about to make his way onto the field here. And who's going to come off? We'll keep an eye on that. And he'll be hoping to make an instant contribution as well. Doesn't look like anyone came off there just yet. So I'd say the referee won't be happy to go. Which, oh, he has. We've seen number nine has made his way off the field there. Uh, looks like, who is number nine? Oh, that's actually Noel McGrath, who's warming up. So he hasn't come off the field yet, but we might see him coming onto the field in a few minutes. So imagine having big hitters like Noel McGrath to come on. It's something pretty, uh, pretty I suppose, sought after by a lot of other clubs. So a bit of a delay here. And eventually we have the man coming off the field. That man over there looks like it's number 13. It looks like Conor Ryan has come off the field. Yeah, Conor Ryan's after coming off. And you see there, Noel McGrath is warming up on the sideline too. I suppose um, a huge impact sub, uh, you could say at least. And um, he'll be another, I suppose, burst of energy to have on the Lockmore side. And he'll be pivotal to to driving them on another that other bit, that other step that they need, I suppose, to finish off the game. 
Again, nothing comes from that score. So still one, or from that free, I should say, still one three to nine points here in favour of Lockmore Castellini. We mentioned here at the start, Lockmore, of course, will play Barsley next week in the Hurland semi-final while Kilsheel and Kilcash are out in intermediate Hurland final against semi-final against Money Goss. So both teams have plenty to play for the rest of the year. And here come Lockmore now on the attack. They're over the 21, still driving forward. The shot's coming in from a t- difficult enough angle on the right-hand side. Is it going to bend? Is it going to curl? It looks like it just, just stayed on the far side with a good move and a well-worked effort from that position. Yeah, a tough old angle there to be scoring from. Um, he took the opportunity, I suppose. It was unfortunate to go over it. There's a bit of a wind going across the field, so maybe that didn't help the situation either. Um, substituting on the Lockmore team there, Noel McGrath is coming on, and number 14, I think, is, is coming off from what I can get her. It looks like, Lee, yeah, who is coming off there? It looks Maybe like uh, Noel is definitely going on. We can confirm that. Number 19 actually has made his way Kieran off. McGrath. So that's Kieran McGrath. Yeah, so interesting to see what Noel will bring to this game. He probably needed to rest in that first half an hour, maybe we'll say. And he's moved into the inside forward line anyway. So dangerous enough to see a man like Noel McGrath come on when you're starting to get a little bit tired maybe in the last 20 minutes or so of this county quarter final. Now it's Kilsheed and New Haven. They've worked the ball over across with their own half back line. They're holding on to possession here. They need a score. They badly need to get the ball down to the other end of the field. And that's what they're trying to do. Lovely driving forward there from Kyo. Lays the ball inside. Looking for Barry Kyo. Out in front there. Out in front. Well taken there. Well taken there was the Kilsheed man, Paul Maher, the man who got the goal in the first half. Trying to drag his side back into this game. They wouldn't himself a free. And here comes Comerford all the way up to kick this from maybe 33, 34 yards out. Yeah, well run by Paul Mara there. A good ball given in. I suppose they're looking for the runs to be made inside in the full forward line and they're being made, so they have to give it fast. Um, as a lot more defence are really um, on them tight and they, they have to give the ball first time. So another opportunity for Evan Comerford to kick it over. He's been kicking very well over the last number three, so I've no doubt that he'll kick this one over as well. Yeah, and here he goes. His style has really come into it a little bit more since he started. His first one maybe didn't go as well as he would have liked, but since then he's kicked two. Here he goes, hoping to make a three. Here he goes, and his left foot. The wind seemed to catch that a little bit, but from his point of view, he's delighted with it because it just kept it between the post and a good score from him. And Comfort is keeping them in this one. They now move up to one, four, two, nine points. Yeah, two points in it now. Um, same, I suppose difference between the teams there in the first half. So um, they'll be they'll be happy to keep that the score difference is only two points at the minute so uh, Lockmore need to get another few scores on the board they've been very quiet in comparison to the first 15 minutes there of the game they seem to have set back a small bit so they'll be looking to kind of up the game another small bit the game has settled very much so yeah, it really has. It is. A lot more, I suppose, will be happy. They're still that two points clear without ever really coming to life here in this second half. And they have the wall again there through Sweeney. Evan Sweeney now, he's over to 65. Still Sweeney takes a solo. Lays a lovely ball to Brian McGrath. Brian McGrath takes a solo and lays on. Another little volleyball pass from John McGrath. Lovely worked play. The shot come in, but this time it goes wide. And John McGrath must have been watching a hell of a lot of volleyball in the last couple of weeks. Because that's the second time he's done it. But it has worked brilliantly both times. Yeah, very clever play, I suppose. He's seen the man run on and he just... It, had in time to, to catch and hand pass so he just volleyed it on to the next player and it was unfortunate that he didn't finish with a score a uh, great passage to play and uh, Lockmore will be looking to give another few attacks like that in the next couple of minutes so Comerford's going to get this one going again 1-4 to 9 points about 11 minutes are coming up on 12 minutes gone in the second half of this one and that ball is dropping dropping on the far side of Phil King shielding her onto this though. lovely pick up what a pick up on the run there still driving forward the ball is just lost eventually oh, I was Stokes over there he did what the hard thing couldn't control it then got a bit annoyed with himself I think then threw in a kind of a late shoulder and now He's going to get a yellow card. I think it's going to be in a second for him, but not for the one to try. And he's doing everything. He can. Oh, it's not. It's actually Paul Maher. He gives, gives himself a black card. So Paul did really well, flicked it up into his hand, then lost and then threw in a bit of a late shoulder. And I suppose he had to get the black card. Yeah, I suppose. Look, um, great defending there by Lockmore. Work rate has, has upped again in the last couple of minutes. Three around him. He was under a bit of pressure. I just say, great uh, flick up, but uh, it was unfortunate to, to lose it there with three people under pressure. He, it was going to be hard to, to keep it in possession. So Lockmore are now a man up, I think, have the, has the other black card brought back on, Aidan McGrath. I'd imagine he's back on the field by now. I think I've seen, I see him see on the field. But losing Paul Maher at a time like this for Kilsheel, and the man who got their goal, the man who's been trying to drive him on for the last couple of minutes, especially in this second half, to lose him now is a bit of a blow. But the ball is over there in the far side of the field. Again, it's gone a bit scrappy. It goes to the ground. It's going to be a line ball. And that line ball is going to kill Sheelan. They're trying to take this as quick as they can. But they decide to go back. Oh, the referee again saw something he didn't like. Is it another foul line ball, for want of a better term? 
yeah, I think he'd taken it too far in, in, into the field or something, so um, they're bringing it back for a throw-up again. It's hard in the players, though, in fairness. The lines aren't overly prominent on the field, so it's hard enough to decide whether you're in or out of the pitch, but either way, we're back in play again here, and Lockmore have worked it all the way back to their goalie, their goalie, Hennessy. Hennessy comes across the field and gives it to Willie Eviston, the team captain over here, the man with plenty of experience, fists that one forward, drives it forward, and here come Lockmore on the attack again. They're slowing things down, though. They're going back, over back, across to their centre-back position. Coming out with it now is Larkin Egan. Egan fists that one forward and Lockmore are on the bounce here they're driving forward here over the 45 over the 65 tackle comes in over the head oh, and the referee decides that's gone away it looked like he was tackled around the neck but the referee says no it's a free and Kilsheel will take that quickly before he changes his mind and he goes back as far as coming for now comes out of his goals out to the 21 to pick it up gives it as far as Kyo Kyo there's a tackle around Kyo's neck the referee agrees with me and that's going to be a free Kilsheel just wants to take this as quick as possible but they're back inside in their own around their number 6 position and they've worked it back across the field still holding on to this one still going on to this one over there on the far side of the field is Madigan Madigan now still has it he gives it on and Lockmore or Kilsheelan just holding on to this one but they need to get it down to the other end of the field in the old days they just say drive it down but that's not the way football's played anymore and they're just holding on to it but they're back inside their own between their 65 and 45 holding on to it hand passing over and back patiently slowly but maybe the time for patience is nearly coming to an end now they've got it they've into a bit of space here on the near side of the field Liam or who is this Mark Yo, the crowd are saying just drive it just drive it I say that's the older members of this crowd as the new crowd don't ever say that kind of thing anymore it's all about possession now still going for Mark Yo, Mark Yo on this near side of the field hard to see here with plenty of crowd coming onto it but they hold on to it there still kill Sheel and still trying to do something with this over back to the other side of the field and they just they had a chance they were inside the 14 now the ball is aimlessly kicked but it's going to be picked up there by Stokes but just over and back and over and back and they just need to have something that's going to break this up a little bit yeah I think look they need, they, they need to penetrate through the, the defensive line there of Lockmore they're, they're not taking on the player they're, they had been with the last number of attacks but they don't seem to they're sitting back and they're, they're not taking them on they need to take them on draw the foul or less uh, create that opportunity to kick it over the bar and I think um, they need to, to start being brave take it on and, and create those opportunities if ever there was a time to be brave, 1-4 to 9 points in favour of Lockmore Castellini. We're expecting the water break in the next couple of minutes, but this is a time that's the end of their football campaign unless they can do something. A lovely ball inside, lovely arrowed ball. That's what we like to see. A kick ball was kicked straight in, and now Kilsheelan are on the attack. All the way up there through Madigan. Madigan, the corner back. He's number two, and he's back, but he's over the 14. Slips, loses his footing, but he holds on to possession. The ball is kicked out there. Oh, it's just gone out now as far as the corner flag, and maybe the chance has gone, but Kilsheelan hold on to possession, and then it's poorly kicked in. John McGrath, right, or Noel McGrath even, right that all day long cut it out and now it's not more and this is where they hit you this is Noel McGrath gives it on he got a late tackle Noel is on the ground but John has it John's over the 45 still John John driving forward he has one point from free already today got 4-6 the last day out still not more on the attack working it over and back Lee McGrath Lee McGrath with the shot on his right hand side oh and it works so hard for that one we just haven't seen a score in so long we're both crying out for it here but that one went to the left and wide yeah as you said look they, they hurt you on the attack the quick turnaround um, they attacked the ball there, attacked the game with pace there up the field. Um, two McGraths involved, and they, they were unfortunate not to get a score out of it. Um, but as I said, that's where they they kill a team, I suppose, going straight at the heart of the defence. And with pace and uh, speed, you can't stop that. It's a dangerous game they're playing. They are only two up, but they are sitting back and letting Kilsheelan come on to them. Now, as yet, Kilsheelan haven't managed to break them down, but it is dodgy when you're only two points up, but they have the ball again now, do a lot more. They're over their own. The attacking 45 still have it now, driving forward into a dangerous position, coming in with the shot. The shot coming in there from Lee McGrath, I think it was on the left hand side, but it goes to the right and wide. In some ways, maybe down there, Kilsheelan can't get any score, so it's a good thing, but there goes the water breaking. That, I suppose, third quarter there was interesting, I suppose. Maybe Kilsheelan came into it a bit more, but then again Lockmore are still on top as much as they need to be yeah I think so I, I, I think Lockmore have really quietened down a small bit and um, they, they haven't seen the, that burst of energy or um, kind of want I suppose to want to win um, in the last number of minutes um, they've quite a few wides there I think it's the three wides in the last couple of minutes too so they'll be disappointed with that the heads kind of seem to be dropped there coming in Kiljeelan are jogging into their their huddle there so they'll be kind of happy enough to, to keep only two points between the teams um, I think Lockmore would expect a little bit more from themselves um, at this minute but um, I'm sure they might regroup and see what they can do yeah, If you're just joining us it's 1-4 to Kil- Kil- Kilsheel and Kilcash it's 9 points to Lockmore Castellani today's game is brought to you in association with Jim Strang and Sons Kilsheel and Main Peugeot dealers Tipperary 
one four to nine points. And as we pause here for a second, it was a big day in Kilchilin yesterday with um, Bill and Paul Maher's sister Nicole getting married there to Rob Lowe. So I pres- presume they're tuned in. I've been told they're tuned in. So hope they're they're still with us anyway. Two points is all that's in this game. So maybe Kilchilin can pull this out and give them the wedding present they deserve. So it looks like we're about to get started here. Lockmore are back in. They're finished their water break before the Kilsheel and Kilcash boys are still talking now they're supposed to have a bit more to talk about but actually no a lot more have decided they have another few things that need to be said Frankie McGrath is leaving a couple other men do the talking here at the moment but we're nearly getting ready to go again here I think these water breaks are only meant to be 60 seconds Samantha that has long gone hasn't it absolutely and I hope they're they're gone all together there that next this time next year um, I think they're really kind of slowing down the game they can kill the momentum sometimes of a game of course they can obviously be an advantage to other teams as well that need to regroup but Look, um, I think it's just a game of two halves, really, and that's the way it should be kept. But um, we'll soon see how that changes. Yeah, I think at Congress this morning, they decided, or maybe it was even late last night, the water breaks are going to be there again at least next year. Yeah, so it's one of the things that we were hoping, I suppose, a lot of people were hoping anyway, proposal B would come through. That didn't happen, but we're stuck with the water breaks. The dressing rooms will be open, though, I suppose, which is something. But um, So we're just going to keep an eye out that how that works out for the next couple of months. With, with everyone back open again, who knows where we'll be in another five or six weeks even, not to mind months. But here we go. We're nearly ready to go again here. Evan Comerford of Kilshe- Kilsheel and Kilcash has the ball in his hands. He's putting it down. He's given a signal. They'll want to work something from this. The last 15 minutes, possibly, of their football season. Well, here we go. Kicked out, dropping. Who's wondering? It's a lot more, man. That man is Liam McGrath. Liam McGrath feeds that one inside. And a lot more still hold on to this. Good work there. They have it. Is there a shot going to come in there? No. Lay it back outside as far as Noel McGrath. Noel looking across. Lovely ball across. What vision he has more than hurling and football. But this one just has too much on it. And it goes out of play. It was a lovely diagonal ball across. There was a man running in there. Liam Tracy was running in, hoping to get something on the end of it. Yeah, unfortunately, they're a great vision, I suppose, as you said, by Noel McGrath to see the man coming in. A um, little bit too far for him this time around. But the opportunity was there again. And I'm sure they'll they'll start popping over the scores once they if they're creating the opportunities every time. So still one four to nine points in favour of Lockmore Castellini and Comerford now again. Left footed this time he goes nice and long from his own point of view over the two sixty fives and it's well won. It's broke down there and Lockmore come on to that. It was Neville Neville the man who came on as a sub a few minutes ago. Let that ball inside but it bounces straight oh, back out and Everston of Lockmore. He looks like a man who's well defined his years there. He might have a bit of grey hair but he's flying up the field there like a young fella. Then he lived that one outside as far as John McGrath. John McGrath is back outside there holding the ball, giving it as far, then as far as Thomas McGrath. Then he's still holding on to it, still a lot more onto that. Brian McGrath then gives it on to the brother John. John now is back inside his own half. Still John gives, a, gives and goes, doesn't get the return though. John is after running up the field and a lot more boys still have it back here now through Maher. Maher has two points already in this game from number seven. Here comes a lot more again now. All the way back there is Liam McGrath. Liam McGrath trying to get past a couple of players there. They were standing him up, didn't let him go anywhere. Gives it back as far as Noel. Noel then leaves it in his side as far as Trassy is it. Trassy then, lovely left foot ball inside, down into the corner, into Conor McGrath. Conor McGrath's out in front, puts that ball outside. Sweeney, Sweeney on the edge of the D, on his right foot. Looked a bit awkward. He shoots to the left and wide, and just he hit it wide, we saw Frankie McGrath with both his hands to his head, and it kind of says it all. Yeah, it seemed to be impossible to get a score there in the last few minutes for Lockmore. They're really, really struggling to put the points over the bar, and... Um, you can see them getting frustrated even on the sideline there that they're not um, keeping the scoreboard taken when they're creating the opportunities. So um, they'll be disappointed there with the last number of voids that they've had. Still only two points in this. It's hard to believe because you would have said a lot more have owned the ball practically for the majority of this game. But only two in it. One, four, two, nine points. And a lot more have won themselves a free. John McGrath is going to take it. He's between the two 65s. John is looking for a bit of support and he, he gets it. And he gets it back again. Here comes John again. Wouldn't Dave a power who's here today? Love to have him playing with the footballer. He's been excellent today. Now the ball has oh, it's just dropped. Well cut out there from a kill ceiling point of view. Stop Lockmore getting on the marks again. And they'll be hoping to hit them on the counter attack now. Owen Kelly. Owen Kelly fist that one down as far as Mark Keogh. Keogh is between the 265s. Now they just need to keep going fast. They need to stop dilly-dallying, going over and back is what their supporters will be saying. They drive this one forward. They're over on the far side of the field, about 30 yards out. Work back as far as Bill. Bill Maher. He's going to take this on himself. Leading. Here he goes, leading forward like a real county man. A man with plenty of experience. Shoots with his left hand side, but he skies that Gary Owen style. And it just goes out to the left and wide. But Bill tried to bring his team into that. This was not need to see a bit more of that. Yeah, I look a great interception at the opposite side of the field there by Mark Stokes um, to stop what could have been a goal chance there by Lockmore. 
Um, Bill Martin was, uh, I suppose, unfortunate enough. The space was there. He had the right to take the shot, and um, it just curled a little bit wide. 1-4 to 9 points to Lockmore. Castellini still in this one. We haven't had a score for quite some time, it feels like. But now, Kilsealan are trying to put that to bed. They're driving forward here. Surely being fouled there. Around his waist was Brian McGrath, rugby style. Didn't bring him down, though. He was intelligent enough, because if he had brought him down, of course, that's a black card. As he stayed up, it probably won't be a black card, but the referee will decide that, I suppose. If he decides that... No, he doesn't. He just says, play away, and Evan Comerford comes down the field again to take this free. Evan has three already from freeze. He scored in the last couple of games as well. This one, it's more central, but further out. He's going into the breeze. It's not going to be an easy one for him, but his team really needed it. If you get this, unbelievably, he's side only be one point down, despite it feels like being second best in this game for the majority of it, and second best by a lot more than one point. So here we go, one four to nine points. About 24, 25 minutes gone in this one. Coming for the left foot, going, going, dropping, ah, oh, but dropping to the right and wide. That was dangerous, and they could have done with it. Yeah, look, if, if it was only a point in between teams, I think Lockmore would have been really under pressure, and that's when the mistakes are coming. So um, that was unfortunate enough for Evan not to get that um, free. He probably will be disappointed with himself not to kick that over the bar and just put a point between the teams. But uh, Lockmore are looking to win this kick out now. I think they're going short, and they'll want to get a score on the board. We haven't seen a score from them in quite some time now, so they'll be looking to put one up Tomas McGrath now of Lockmore gives it back outside as far as John Maher John Maher fists that one forward and Lockmore as we were saying there they do need a score and it looks like they're starting to listen to us and they're driving forward over into the dangerous side of the field now the shot oh just as he was about to open the shoulders I suppose and shoot there Trassie looks like he got pulled down and this will be a scoreable enough one there's no gimmies and there's no gimmies with the conditions we've had here today with the field kind of cutting up a little bit the wind swirling all around the place but it's still it looks like coming across is Conor McGrath he's not on the field long but he'll be hoping to take this one and put this over the bar yeah I suppose like more need this they haven't been scoring from play so they're going to be looking they're going to be looking to get this score over the bar now and this one has gone wide again and that's a huge boost for Kilsheelan. And another boost for them is the fact that Paul Maher has come back onto the field. He's got a goal today. He's got a black card today. He'd like to get another goal today, you'd imagine. He's onto the field now. He's had a 10-minute rest. And who knows, that might be a huge boost to him. He might be flying blast players with that 10-minute rest he's had. But we're going again here. There couldn't be a huge amount of time left in this one. 1-4 to 9 points. I reckon it's about 25 minutes gone or so. 25 and a half minutes. Of course, you take the water break out of that. So maybe we've maybe six minutes in total left between everything. Maybe six or seven. But 1-4 to nine points in favour of Lockmore and the, all the way back there is Kilsheelner just playing this back, back line really uh, Comerford just handed that out as far as Kyo Kyo who's number 10 is back but he's playing back inside his own full back line at the moment gives that one as far as Owen Kelly Owen Kelly then Owen Kelly goes forward got a tackle around the neck and won himself a free they're trying to give him a signal out here they were trying to give Kyo a signal out here to <laughs> Management were waving hands at him, but he didn't see him. They're trying to make him switch the play, and they eventually have switched it now. It's through Stokes. Stokes, who's been good when he's got the ball today. Stokes takes four or five solos, and now he's worked it all the way up into the 21. Lovely ball inside as far as Bill. Bill Maher now on his left-hand side. Oh, gives another little dummy on his left. Turns onto his right. This will be a brilliant score, but it doesn't, unfortunately. It hangs up in the air. It hangs. It's bouncing around the square. It kills Sheila and have it. Oh, but it wouldn't have had a free in. That one looked like it had kind of been lost when it was just fired into the air, but they've won themselves a free around 21 yards out, and they'll take that all day. Yeah, definitely. Look, it went up between two lock more people, I think, went up for the ball, but it was, not, it was fortunate enough for the Kilsheila man to, to win it between the two, whatever way it dropped, and uh, there's not a yellow card after being handed out there to, to lock more player. You can see Evan Comfort's after coming up from the goal line once again. Um, to put this over the bar he's after coming up a number of times now and um, I'm sure this will be an easy one for him to kick over the bar and just put a point between between the teams so um, Lockmore haven't scored I think in, in a good 15, 20, 20 minutes I think yeah. uh, they've had 4 or 5 wides in the last number of attempts so they'll be very disappointed and you can see the frustration come about this one is much more straightforward. It's only about 14, 15 yards out. Come up for gets that, puts it over. He has four for the day now. And there's nothing in this game. One point, one five to nine points. Really, Kilsheelan must be counting their blessings that are still in this game because it has been nearly all a lot more. They do seem to be the better team, but the scoreboard where it counts, one five to nine points. And as we were talking there, uh, as we were talking there, it looks like um, Brian McGrath indeed received a yellow card. So here we go again. Lockmore have it back inside their own. 
inside their own 13. They're playing little solos and little hand pass between themselves and the goalie. Kilsheelan don't like that. Kilsheelan have managed to block it down. It looks like it's Bill now. Bill Maher inside the 21. He did brilliant there. They managed to block down the goalkeeper of Lockmore who were just kind of passing over back between themselves in the corner back. And it's Kilsheelan now have a chance. They're still inside about the 14. Shot coming in. Brilliant block there. Brilliant block over there by Brian McGrath. That one looked like it might have been heading over the bar to make this game all square. But Brian McGrath did brilliantly well. Went a bit forward, won himself a free, and now a lot more are back in possession of the ball. Noel McGrath. Noel McGrath is about 21 yards out. Noel does a little swivel, buys himself a bit of time, then gives it back as far as the brother. The brother Brian now has it. Gives it on to the other brother, John. John gives it back to Brian. They're driving forward here, up around the 65. Brian McGrath takes a couple of solos, takes the sting out of this game. They're a point up, but it may as well be 20 points, I suppose, in some ways, if they keep holding on to the ball. And they've won themselves a free just inside the Kilsheelan half. And they're looking to take this one quickly. Left that ball down inside into Lee McGrath. Lee McGrath actually not out in front. It looks like it's Kieran McGrath now who has it. Takes on his man, goes past him. Connor McGrath, in fact, wins himself a free over by the sideline, maybe about 30 yards out. But this could be a big score for them. Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to see how far out it is. I don't know if it's a scoreable free, really. Um, they might go for it. They might go short and, and try to kick it over the bar. Looks like John McGrath is going to... Um, take it from the ground and, and give it a good shot as I said they've had a number of wides in the last few minutes so they're going to need this one to go over the bar there's only a point between both teams so this could turn into a dogfight yet um, between the teams so um, be interesting to see how this one goes the wind is starting to kick up a little bit here comes John he already had John McGrath he already has a point already today it's about 4-5 in from the sideline about 30 yards out nothing easy about this one he puts it across almost soccer side and it's punched into the back of the net but the referee has his hand up square ball and Kilsheila take that as quick as they can again to get away with the ball they ended up in the back of the net but it was a square ball and still there's only a point in this one 1-5 to 9 points all to play for here coming into the last 3 or 4 minutes is all that's left in this game today's game was brought to you in association with Jim Strang and Sons Kilsheila and main Peugeot dealers Tipperary and we've a stoppage over there the referee talking to a few players John McGrath is involved in that one and we're going to have a bit of a chat Sam I didn't see you an awful lot of that you might tell us what you saw no I think he just got caught up in the tackle there he's after <laughs> getting a yellow card for, for that he, he kind of stood him up held him and um, I think it was nearly a bit of a, le- a bear hug more so than anything so uh, trying to slow down the play I suppose of Kilsheel and getting back up with a fast attack and um, just a bit tactical in that sense and we're <laughs> we've by my calculations, we're over the 30 minute mark, but with the water break and everyone will just have to keep an eye out how long they'll actually play. 1 5 to 9 points, so only one point in this. Kilsheel and Field, they've it all to play for here, only one point, the narrowest of margins, and they have the ball. They're over on the far side of the field, a lot more doing their best to pin them back into their own half, doing everything they can to just pin them back in there. But now it's Owen Kelly, Owen Kelly of Kilsheel and Fields that one on as far as Stokes again. Stokes now driving forward, gives that as far as. Gives it as far as Madigan. Madigan now inside the 45. The pass is well read and cut out there. A lot more defending brilliantly well. Got a fist, got a hand in there, turned that over. And it's John McGrath who's all the way back there, back in his own half back line, winning the ball there, feeding it forward. Oh, it's gone to ground again. Who has it? The crowd don't like this. The referee decides he's going to throw it in. There's maybe five or six lads on the ground at the moment. Now things are getting a bit wet and mucky and wintry at the moment. So it's easy enough to go to ground. But it looks like it's going to be a throw in, is it? He's got his hand up actually. Yeah, it seems to be he's going to throw in. I think uh, there's a bit of. Um, it's hard to know who to give it to. Uh, this will be important for Kilsheelan to win this now. Absolutely huge. We're on the 21 and Kilsheelan have won that. They've worked about. Now they're back as far as the 45. They're back as far as Gibbs. Gibbs lets that one inside. They need to hold on to They need to win the ball here. And they have it. Kilsheelan are on the attack. The shot's coming in dangerously across the square. But the referee was playing advantage. And we have a free. There's one point in this game. We're gone over the half an hour as far as I can see. Up comes Comerford to take this one. This could make it a draw. We could be heading to extra time here, possibly in the dark. I hope everyone brought their cars and starts turning them onto the field here because it could get dark if this goes extra time. Comerford has a chance to bring his side and keep them in this Tipperary Senior Football Championship. Yeah, look, I think it's only fair. They've been playing very, very well the last while and I think they kept Lockmore at bay there while Paul Mara was gone off with a, a black card for the 10 minutes. There was no score at either side, so... Um, Evan Comfort will be hoping to get this over and, and make it a, a, a draw game. Absolutely, kicking into a fairly rough breeze. You can see it there, the corner flag is blowing straight into his face. Here comes Comfort, left hand side, not an easy right. angle. The ball is hung in the air. Oh, where is that gone? Oh, it's gone to the right and wide. The wind really got a hold of that one and almost brought it back to him. Yeah, unfortunate there for Evan. As you said, the wind is really after picking up. He was kicking against the wind there and it just really curled out over the inline and he's very disappointed in himself walking back down to the goal line with only, I'd say, less than a minute of, of the game left. 
Yeah, there can't be long left, but it has turned very wintry in the last couple of minutes, and that one definitely had an effect on that ball. It just almost went backwards on him. Now the ball is kicked around the kick out. It's won again by Gil Sheelan, but it's out between the 265. They'll want to have one last goal. Here comes Bill Maher. Bill fists that one forward, gets the return. Now Bill is up inside about 30 yards out. Feeds it in again to Gil Sheelan men. Tackle themselves almost. And Everston of Lockmore, using experience, comes in between two Lockmore men and wins it. And now he's driving forward. Gives the ball on as far as Noel McGrath. Noel McGrath takes a second, but Noel's pass is well read. Brindley cut out there by Stokes and now they're at six and sevens is at home and here comes Gil Sheelan oh but again tiredness is really starting to come into the game as that pass doesn't go to hand and now it's lot more trying to come forward they've lost the ball they've gone to ground the ball is on the ground over there on the far side of the field about 60 yards out from the Gil Sheelan at goal the goal they're defending and now Stokes has it Stokes has it he's moved up around the 65 now they're hoping to get something still Stokes of Gil Sheelan oh and there Stokes batted away his player and He's given away a free, which seems incredibly harsh. Yeah, I think he took uh, too many steps here at that time, um, trying to come out of the defence of the ball, making sure of it. I suppose there wasn't too many uh, players around him supporting the play, but um, that was unfortunate enough for him, I suppose, a simple mistake, um, and unfortunate to get caught for, for overcarrying there. Uh, Lockmore in possession now, and that's where they want to be, so they'll be looking to hold possession there for the last, uh, last minute or so that's left in the game. They still have not They're over around the 21 yards. Still a lot more on possession of the ball. Oh, the ball goes to ground again. It's getting so wet and mucky and players are tired. But you'll see them be delighted that happened. They had a chance of a goal there. Did a lot more. About 14 yards out when they dropped the ball. But now Kilsheel and have it. But in their slow kind of meandering way. They need to get the ball up the field. It's too risky to kick it they'll feel. So it has to go through the lines all over again. Every player needs need to get a touch on the ball. And it's... Whoa! It's lost again over there. It looks like it was John Maher read that one out. And John Maher now is driving forward. Haven't seen a huge amount of him in the game. But drives forward there. Holds on to possession. Brian McGrath now has it. Brian McGrath loses it. It's gone to ground again. And Brian McGrath has won himself a free that he's fairly fortuitous to get, you'd imagine. Maybe he dropped the ball with a tackle, hand on the back. But he'll be in no hurry to take this one. Yeah, I think uh, Bill Maher just gave him a little nudge in the back there. And uh, he fell over. So he'll be looking for that free. They're looking to hold on to it. And they won't be in any panic to take it either. Oh... Oh, and there we go. It just looked like they kicked the ball away the last time. Lockmore, get out of jail as we get the final whistle. This one has finished. Nine points to Lockmore, Castellani. 1-5 to Kill Sheelan, Kill Cash. There's a tongue twister for you. But one point win for Lockmore, Castellani. They'll be delighted to have got, got out of it here because Kill Sheelan really put it up to him. Absolutely. I think Kill Sheelan really upped it in the second half and they were unfortunate not to come out here. Um, with a win um, whatever about getting to extra time to be honest um, Kilshee will be very very disappointed themselves you can see it in their faces there today uh, now at the minute walking off the field um, I think Lockmore will be really relieved coming off the field um, they kind of as you say got out of jail uh, wouldn't be in the performance that they would have wanted I'd imagine and um, they'll be disappointed and be looking at ways and to improve if they're to, to progress in the championship it's it's supposed quarterfinals, they'll tell you, and semi-finals to so more of an extent, are all about winning, I suppose. And it gives then Frankie McGrath something to work on in training. If they'd been perfect today, they'd be have their heads, I suppose, exploded with confidence. Now they have stuff to work on. So maybe it's not the worst thing from a lot more point of view. Who stood out for you? Who impressed out there for you today? Yeah, look, I think um, your, your main characters, I suppose, on Kilsheel inside you, have Evan Comfort there, you can see him down the goal and he's very disappointed. Um and Bill Maher was excellent as well in defence, you know, got in and he was attacking all the time. Uh, Mark Yeo was excellent in defence, or in, in the attack as well, all just taking on the player as, as well as Paul Maher who was unfortunate to get a black card there and missed 10 minutes, which they really did miss him in the, the forward line. Um, taking on the, the, the Lockmore defence, you know, and he scored a great goal too. Um, for Lockmore, I think, look, um, in midfield, Brian McGrath worked very, very hard. His work rate was superb, and you had the likes of um, the corner forward as well, um, giving Connor Ryan's uh, contributing two points as well, or three, a few points from freeze and from play as well. So um, they have a good few players to come on. I think they. Uh, Willie Everston, the captain there in the full back line, um, really put in a lot of interceptions, I suppose, at, at critical times um, to stop Kilsheel and getting some of the scores as well. So um, they've a lot to work on, I suppose, a lot more. And uh, the, going into the semi final, depending on who they meet, they'll be looking to, to see can they change a few things. I suppose they did uh, have a good few wides there in the second half, and they'll be disappointed with that. Like it was unfortunate. Um, that Kilsheelan didn't make the most of those those wides that Lockmore just could not get over the bar in the second half and I think they really their their performance did dip in the second half too so um, they'll be looking to see where they can improve and, and drive it on for the semi-final 
Yeah. They're out, but and Kilsheelan are out of the football. They're still in the hurling. They have the hurling next week against Money Goal. A lot more march on on both codes. The thoughts there of Samantha Lambert. I've been Paul Jenkins. Thanks very much for your company here today. We'll be back again next week with the rest of the semi-finals in the hurling.